What's happening, everybody? I've been spending a lot of time recently cracking on Motley Crue. <laughs> it's kind of like low-hanging fruit. They're easy to crack on these days. And I just want to clarify a couple things and uh, really tell you where I stand with this iconic, iconic rock group. Iconic, iconic? Two iconics? I'll give them two iconics. First off, uh, let me say that they have had an epic career. When you look at all the bands from their era, like who really kept it going, it, that is a very very small list very small list indeed the other thing about the crew is that they just forgot where they came from they forgot how bad they once wanted it and subsequently their performance their live performance has uh, slid downhill uh, quite a bit in the modern era where 90% of all bands that get up there, maybe even more, have tracks rolling behind them. It's just an industry standard nowadays. Why they can't get Vince Neil on a vocal track where they need it the most, uh, I don't know. I don't know. But it just it, they just come across live that they don't care about the fan base. You know, they've lost the plot where they... They forgot what it's all about to spend your hard-earned money on a ticket, you know, get a sitter for the kids, go out and, and see a show and expect a great performance. You know, you got the big audio, you got the lights and the lasers and the video package and you got all that, but not the one thing that everyone really wants, which is a, um, a solid uh, musical performance and vocal performance. You know, their first album, Too Fast for Love, you know, I thought it was fucking great. When I first heard Too Fast for Love, uh, I thought it was a rock solid album, and I was really excited about this group. The next one comes out, which was um, Shout at the Devil, and I saw them open for Ozzy. I thought the performance was pretty good, but Honestly, I thought that the album itself was really uh, bubblegum metal at best. You know, it was just kind of um, it was just kind of cheesy. You know, I mean, some of the riffs were great. I, you know, everyone likes uh, Tommy Lee's drum style, but um, I thought the songs were kind of cheesy. Theater of Pain after that had some good songs on that. Given that Girls, 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 great album. And I saw that tour as well. Uh, I saw that tour as well, and that was a uh, fantastic show that they put on. You know, give it to Motley Crue. They bring it. They bring a good show. Dr. Feelgood after that. Then uh, I think the Generation Swine came out, which, um, you know, mixed reviews for that. And if they had albums after that, which I'm sure they did, I am not. don't know what they were. All I know is this. It's blatantly obvious to uh, the fan base that this band is not interested in what you think <laughs> about your hard-earned money. I say locally find a good Motley Crue tribute band and go see them and save some money and have a good fandom experience and hang out with a bunch of Motley Crue fans. Because I, I say this about tribute groups, you know, um, at least you're... The, the band that's playing the music a fan, they're giving it at all. Everyone's there a fan. Big, fan, big fandom experience. Big fandom experience. I'm trying to say that. But that's what I think about that, man. I mean, <laughs> you know, when, when you've become a parody and a joke of your own thing, I mean, come on, guys, you know. Uh, drop the ticket prices or pick up the pace, right? Isn't that what... <laughs> Isn't that a, a bare minimum thing? So I think about Motley Crue. Whoa, 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 whoa. I, I got to say something about Mick Mars. My God, I got to say something about Mick Mars, who undoubtedly was the brains of the entire operation musically. First off, he's the one that came up with the name. 
forgot the name before that. They were Finkelstein and the Fuck Sticks. Was that right? I think that's true. But um, quote me on that. Mick Mars was absolutely the talent in the band. You know, you know who wrote all those riffs, and it was Mick Mars. And the way they got rid of him and the way they shovel him off to the side was really, really weak. <laughs> really, really weak. It was a bad public breakup, and I'm surprised that um, that their piss-poor attitude and the way they treated him didn't affect ticket sales more. But, you know, that's for that. But Mick, man. He was 100% what they were all about. 